What's going on, y'all? Uh, why does camera look foggy, bitch? God damn, get the shit together. Excuse me. Technical difficulties for a second. Okay. Shit. You know I'm picky about my stuff. But, um, anyway. Love and Hip Hop ATL Season 3, Episode 12, I believe. We start this shit off with Mimi. First of all, the name of the episode is called Release Day. So, we know this episode is all about this damn sex tape and all this shit. Mimi. <clears throat> so, I'm getting my daughter Eva ready to go see her father. And I'm just doing all this because in the back of my mind, I know that this sex tape is coming out. And this is a decision that I have to deal with. And I know that one day, I'm going to have to tell my daughter this. Let her know why her mother did this. And it was like, just let her know that her future will be secured no matter which way I went about it. Because this was a situation that was out of my hands. I said, Mimi, shut the fuck up with this goddamn little speech that you tried to give at the beginning to justify the shit and then to bring your daughter into it. Bitch, you wasn't scared about this goddamn sex tape, whatever. Because as soon as this bitch came out, you and Nico going around town doing interviews and, you know, living it up and all that shit, bitch, you ain't fooling no motherfucking body. And it was just so sad when the little girl was like, you know, I want to see you and daddy together. I was like, at the same time, I said, oh, the little girl... If it got more sense than both Stevie and motherfucking Mimi put together. But, bitch, this was a nice little scene to see Stevie with his, and not being a dick, not being a bitch, not being an asshole, not being a jerk with his daughter and all that shit. But, nigga, but, nigga, for you to sit up in there and say something, this is my little girl, you know, and one day she going to be growing up and she going to get a man and she needs to learn how to respect herself so she can get somebody that's going to respect her. And the only person that's going to show her that is daddy. And I said, you bitch. So your daughter's supposed to look at you as an example as to what to do, you know, when she's in a relationship, what type of man to get when you dog every fucking woman that you've been with, including her mother. There's irony there somewhere. I just pick it out, you know, just pick, reach in and pick it out. You know, it's just... Uh-uh. Then Jocelyn. <clears throat> you know what all this shit's going on with Stevie? And it's like, this nigga just not acting right. And so, you know, to get over all this stuff, I just go shopping. Bitch, I want some of this. You got this skank top? I think I need to show some more titties. It's like I haven't been showing in the titties lady. I said, okay, Jocelyn. I know y'all seen that tape. I know y'all seen that shit. Let me just tell y'all this. Two things. Jocelyn, you are not the baddest bitch, okay? Look, they booed your ass up in Dallas. Boo, bitch, I was listening to that shit. I said, what the fuck is she doing? And they're going to say, DJ, run that track back. Uh-uh, run that track back. Then you got these other little clips coming out with you in the studio. You know, you, you, you coked up on that Molly and everything else. And these motherfuckers is filming you and, and making fun of your ass. And you sweating and you just doing all this shit and talking out your ass. And you think the shit is cute. And, you know, Stevie J did go in on dude comments and all that shit and trying to tell people, to, you know, they better watch themselves. And I'm like, this is your investment. And look at it. We, they just exposed the fact that we already knew that the bitch is nothing. Okay? That's, she's just a fucking bad woman to you. And it's a pimp. You're a pimp. That's all you're doing is fucking taking advantage of the bitch. And she's the last one you took. So I feel no sympathy for either party. But she gets on the phone. And I don't know. It just seemed... A little scripted, the way that they were going from this person to that person. It looked sound. It looked like both of them was talking on, you know, wasn't talking to nobody really, and they was just recording it, and then they just spliced it together. I don't know. It just seemed kind of weird a little bit. But K Michelle was up on that bitch, and you know, Jocelyn. Since when? I knew they was okay, like the last season before K Michelle left. But since when did they become like best friends and all that shit? But okay, whatever. Um. After that, she on the phone with K. Michelle. K. Michelle up in New York, and Jocelyn, like, she she finna come out there because, you know, Stevie, uh, girl, this girl, Stevie just doing a lot, and I just I just need to get away. You know, show me a lot of the men's and, and, and what I can do my music because, you know, Stevie act like he got a hold on me, like he the only person that can work with me and all that stuff. So I was like, basically, that he the only one that some would take you seriously, and I doubt that he really do. You know, use a joke in his ass, too, because he wouldn't do the shit that he do. But then... K. Michelle was like, yeah, you could come up here and, um, you know, they got studios and people up here. I said, K. Michelle, don't do that. What the fuck?
fuck is your problem? I mean, I know you make music for the ratchets and the hood rats, but goddamn, there's a level to your shit, and then there's a level of shit that we do not need, okay? And Jocelyn is the shit that we don't need, all right? We just don't do it, Kay. I don't... Don't do it. I just... No. No. So, Kurt actually went on ahead and threw this I'm Sorry party, and... Look, it was a good idea, I guess, because, you know, the bitch embarrassed your wife in front of the whole damn world that will actually watch this shit. I, look, I can't with Rashida and Kurt. You know, after seeing their ass on Candy's wedding and seeing how they was acting like everything was all good. Like, what's the time frame? Because everything, maybe they putting on stunts and shows, putting on face for everybody, but... Come on now. I don't see how a woman can stay with somebody. I don't give a damn how long y'all been together. But he publicly humiliated your ass in front of a whole bunch of people. And millions of people who tuned in to watch this shit, he publicly humiliated you and you took him back. You went through all this shit. He denied your child. He cheated on you. Blamed you for cheating. Said that the child wasn't his. Got a fucking DNA test. Broke your mama glasses. Got mad over a burn bike. Well, I mean, I would have got mad over that too. But, you know, all of this shit. Tried to get a little thought up in there to babysit your child. And actually have her touching your baby. And you just take him back like it's all good. Because he brought you a fucking car and some fucking jewelry. And he threw this little stupid ass party that wasn't even his idea. It was your mother's idea, Rashida. Okay? And you fell for it. You fell so head over heels back into, you know, like, if that if that was me and I was Kurt, that would be like, oh, okay, you know, so I can go do this shit again. And all I know is she gonna, all I have, this is all I gotta do to, um, you know, make it all right again. Look, come on now. Excuse me. It was just stupid. You know, Benzino and Althea coming up to the party. You got the two birds, Erica Dixon and um, Carly Red. Oh, my God. What's she doing here? And what is this? Bitch, first of all, um, Kurt is Benzino's friend. Okay? Althea is Rashida's friend. So, you know, that's what the fuck she's doing there. She ain't there for y'all. All right? So, calm your motherfucking heels. Okay? You know? And, um, Erica... I ain't seen this bitch ever since she threw that drink. Bitch, she ain't throw the drink on you. You just so happen to be standing there and you inserted yourself in that shit. So you calm the fuck down and go suck on Scrappy. Okay? Well, he don't want your ass no more. But anyway, I'm sorry. Um, So they got their nose turned up at out there already. Then the party gets underway. Here come Bobby Valentino ass coming out looking like he finna go play golf or he finna be somebody catty. I don't know. And... He just singing some shit. This is for my boy Kurt to you, Rashida, because you know he fucked up. He's the sorriest man up in ATL. And I'm like, okay, this is corny as fuck. You know, here go, Rashida. Oh, he got the singing. Okay, you know, I see you, Kurt. He on the right track. And I'm saying here like, what? That's what it takes? Really? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And, you know, Kurt get up there to speak. And... He damn near blamed everything on Benzino and Bobby Valentino. Okay, yes, you went away to a cabin. Benzino come up there talking and give his little apologies and all that shit too. Ben gonna put the shit on Bobby Valentino because he was like, we go to the cabin, we know it was gonna be girls up in there. I didn't know that. Mind you, when this shit all happened, Benzino was the only motherfucker that was the voice of reason trying to tell Kurt you know, slow the fuck down. You don't want to fuck up your relationship when that whole shit happened. He was the only one telling him that. But you can only tell a grown-ass man so much and you can just say, hey, I fucking told your ass so, you know, you do what you got to do. That ain't on me because I told you. Busy you know, ain't had shit to apologize for. Bobby Valentino, you ain't had shit to apologize for. It was not their fault that you couldn't keep your dick in your pants when you went up there. Who gives a fuck if it was hoes up in that damn cabin? You could have said no. You could have said no. They didn't jump you. They didn't rape you. You didn't rape them. So what the fuck are you talking about? This they fault. They didn't force you to fuck them girls. Girl, stop fucking playing, Kurt. It was just up. Uh. And then, you know, Benzino and Althea over there trying to <laughs> talk and gonna say something. You know, I see your girls over there. You know, I want to come over there and um 
say, hey, girls, how y'all doing? You know, since we ain't seen them in a long time. And Benzino was like, this ain't the place to say touch. She was like, no, I'm serious. Like, I want to give us some, a sincere hello or whatever. It was like, let me go do it now. And then he was like, no, 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 wait. If you're going to do this shit, let me do it first. So, you know, won't shit pop off. And I said, oh, my God, I feel not today. Not today. It's not the place. <laughs> I know they write that, but it is not the place to edit out. And go back. Okay, Kurt. He gave his mama, his stepmama, his stepmama, his mother-in-law some new product glasses. I was like, did Rashida tell you her prescription? Because them one sunglasses, I'm just saying. Them was like looking glasses, reading glasses, or whatever the fuck. Okay, that's fine. And he gonna say something, I guess I'm still not getting my bike back. Oh, bitch, no. Shut the fuck up about this goddamn bike. You know, you claiming so much about how... <coughs> excuse me. Y'all didn't have no money. Y'all need to do this stuff to get some money in the last season and all this shit. And now you shelling out money, shelling out money to get her this car that you probably rented. I mean, ain't no shame in that, but whatever. Get her this cage jewelry, jewelry uh, heart or whatever. That little shit that you said about it. So, you know, you lost your heart and I gave you this one. You know, I was going to give it to you some time ago, but, you know, shit happened. And um, this is basically my heart, so you can put it next to your heart at all times. And she was like, oh, I was like, no. <laughs> No, you giving the end too easy. Like, it's just so fucking fake. And it, it just rubbed me raw. Like, y'all, stop fucking playing. And then, um, <clears throat> Carly Red had the nerve to say, shoot, they doing this party. Look, if Jock did, Jock needs to be up in here, um, seeing he's sorry and throwing a party or whatever. But his ass at home, he not here today. With all the shit that he's done to you and all that stuff, basically. You know, going off the fact that he cheated and all this bullshit. But, bitch, you're a fucking side bitch, okay? I don't give a fuck. Young Jock is still married. His wife just filed for divorce. Like, today. Today. Okay? That motherfucker just filed for divorce. Yes, they've been separated, but the bitch just filed for divorce. This whole time, I thought they were fucking done. Okay? So, not only... You know, he probably was cheating on... I know he was cheating on the wife with a whole bunch of bitches, and I'm pretty sure Carly Red was one. Then you flaunting this relationship, you know, basically saying you're completely done instead of just now filing the fucking papers then instead of just filing now. And then how you gonna cheat on the sad bitch with another sad bitch? And he got three kids at home. Child, I can't. <laughs> I fucking care with these people. So, Mama D goes over to Scrappy. You know... She trying to, you know, because uh, she was pissed off about the shit that happened with Erica Pinky. You know, Erica Pinky in her uh, in her voice. But, pause. Let me just say this. Mama D has really gotten it together. I mean, I think she been looking on Twitter and looking on Instagram and every all these social networks. And everybody just going in on how her hair is, how her clothes is. Because, bitch, even though in the confessionals... I still think it's a little bit too much fucking hair on her head. She still look kind of decent. But then when she was sitting down there with uh Scrappy and she got the hair like that and then a little swoop right there, I said, Mama, did your hair you get nice? Bitch, you can't clean up when you want to. Ugh. But then, you know, she was basically like, I, I raised you to be a motherfucking man. I ain't raised you to do what you did and all this shit. And, and, and basically wanted him to apologize to Erica for that, what happened, and, you know, go back to being her friend. And he was like, I mean, I do feel bad because she got a daughter. And I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. All these hoes got kids, and they out here chasing dick. From what I'm hearing, the kids ain't really a factor. The dick is. That's what's more important in their life right about now. And I'm like, respect his relationship. Didn't... <laughs> Why are y'all pushing so hard for them to go back to be a friend? I just don't understand it, but hey, whatever. So he gonna go talk and apologize and all that bullshit to Erica. Who gives a fuck? Erica Pinky, we can do without her. Back at the bar at the party, the sorry party, you know, Benzino and Althea do sit down and they talk to uh Carly Red and Erica and apologize. Althea, you know, when we went to the party and I just wanna say that, did I throw something on you? Oh, I did, Erica. It wasn't supposed to be on you, and I'm just sorry that it got on you, so I apologize. He was like, but let me tell you, and he goes, Carly, you should give me an apology, too, out there. For what? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would have said the same damn thing, bitch. And 
Here go Erica. I just want to know why was you up there so heated and why was you popping off? Well, you know, I wasn't. Y'all came up into our party. You know, you're the ex, okay? And you want to say all this stuff, so therefore, I, you you got the reaction that you got. All right? It was our thing. But you this and you that. No, bitch. You, I said, wait a minute. Y'all will not do this shit at this thing, getting all loud as fuck and everything. And, I mean... I was with Althea when she said, I said I apologize. That should have been it. That should have been enough. And I'm like, what the fuck did y'all want the bitch to do? Okay, and here go Carly Rich. You need to shut the fuck up because I got a whole bunch of shit on you. A whole bunch of shit on you. Carly, Benzino know about Stevie. Benzino probably know about everything else that you think you got on her. Okay, so shut the fuck up. All right, just, just let that shit go. And you can't call this bitch a hoe when you a hoe yourself, okay? It's just like being on Instagram or Twitter and people be tweeting and posting shit, you know, about stuff. Kind of call other people out for doing shit, but yet they the main ones that do it. I've been seeing a lot of that lately. And I've been looking at my shit like, motherfucker, are you serious? Okay, come on. Let's stop with this bullshit. Let's be real, right? Benzino pulled her out and was like, I feel let's fucking go. And... <laughs> They make in front of her shorts and all that with Rashida. And then Benzina was like, well, if you knew this was going to happen, why you let them girls get to you like that? You shouldn't have went over there and said shit. True. True, because it wasn't the time nor the fucking place. So Mama D calls Erica Pinky over to her apartment. Look, who gives a fuck? Erica Pinky, I am so tired of this bitch keep on saying, you know, I just want him to be the man that you raised him. You know, I see the potential in him. Who gives a fuck, bitch? You saying all the stuff to get Mama D on your side. You've been watching the show. You've been around him and you know how Mama D works. So therefore, you doing all the shit to get her on your side. Who gives a fuck? You sitting there trying to cry and saying all this shit. And it's like, bitch, I don't give a fuck about your friendship or whatever. Respect the fact that he has a fucking uh, relationship. And if he want to cut off a friendship with you for his girl, then let him fucking do that, bitch. <laughs> Move the fuck on to somebody who's going to give you what you want and what you actually need. I can't stand these weak ass bitches. I can't stand a weak female, period. A weak, insecure ass bitch. I can't. I can't. I just don't understand them. And, um, you know, who gives a fuck? I ain't even finna go into detail about that shit. Jocelyn is leaving Stevie J. <laughs> this setup ass scene, he's sitting on the couch playing his little guitar. And then Jocelyn come, she packing and she just all of a sudden zooms up out. He was like, what you doing? What you doing? <laughs> She was like, I'm leaving you, Stevie. I need a break. I need a break. And I think you hate me because you want to admit that you slept with Athea, okay? You want to admit that. But, you know, fuck this shit. I'm your wife. Yo, you got a baby mama that's 45 years old finna come out with a porn tape. And look, it's going to take the Hip Hop Weekly and just rip the shit up like it's doing something. Like, we can't go get some other copies. Like, oh, my God, that really touched me and hurt me. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> y'all are fucking jokes. Y'all really are. But, Jocelyn, I got to ask a question. What the fuck did you have in your hair? She looked like, in the confessionals, like she, uh, now, like she got a fresh couple of few bundles or whatever and didn't do nothing to it. Just, you know, took the rubber band off and they was crinkled and put it in there. Oh, or it looked like a crochet, you know, shawl or, or a throw rug that was on her head. Or it looked like a fucking poodle, you know, when they be just so furry and shit. It was just, look, it was too fucking much. It was like... What the hell are you doing, okay? You got a scarf around your face. I don't... I just wasn't getting it. They're exhausting because it's not even funny no more. I was like, girl, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Leave, bitch. You ain't doing nothing now. Because you up in there making music for everybody else. He's like, I'm in here making hits for you. You ain't making no hits for me. You making hits for everybody else. I was like, that's true because we saw Dallas. Jocelyn is in Jocelyn. Jocelyn is in fucking New York in a goddamn studio with that fucking song. I get money. I get money. Cause I'm the Puerto Rican princess and I get money. You see how I do cause I get money. Auto tune that. Auto tune that. And that's exactly how it sounds. Cause I get money. Mind you, I sent the video and she wasn't doing nothing but being up in the tub saying, I get money. And I was like, bitch, what? This video, I can't tell bad the production of it. You don't. 
<laughs> but K. Michelle come up in there. First of all, and let me just point this out. K. Michelle, you aren't a real fucking friend. And I'm going to tell you this. Why? Because if you was really her friend, you would tell that bitch the truth. Give that shit up. Because that song, hell no. Her career, hell no. All right? Let that shit go. Don't egg this bullshit on. Don't be a fucking kiss ass. Don't say, don't, I don't know what the problem is. I just don't know if you're doing this for the show or whatever because you cannot sit here honestly and tell me that you thought that shit was good. Okay. Okay. The best part of that little scene was when they were sitting there looking at that motherfucking, um, cause you know, uh, uh, Jocelyn had to go in on Stevie. And basically saying, you know, they, uh, Althea and him fucked and all that shit. And then, you know, talking about Ben Zane off and getting married. And, you know, K. Michelle got her shit to say about that. But when they played that sex tape for Mimi, and K. Michelle said, she not going to be called Meek Mouth. Bitch, I like to dad, but uh, they commentary on the damn thing. Oh, oh, look at them titties. The titties all the way down here. Oh, my God. Oh, she didn't even wax, bitch. Why she up there like... I was up in here fucking die laughing for fu some damn reason. It was just funny. Their commentary. I will just say commentary. Okay, I said the word right. You know I had my moments. I was just, I said, okay, that that was funny. I, I was here for that shit. But, you know, like I said, K. Michelle, you're not a real friend for telling her that. For, 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 mm -mm, this music shit. Tell her to stop, okay? But we're going to move past that. The sex tape comes out. Erica, well, Arian goes over to Erica Dixon's house to watch this shit with her. Y'all watch porn? Do y'all watch porn with y'all friend like that? Especially, I mean, I can understand. Do dudes watch, dudes be watching porn together? That always baffles me. And y'all supposed to be straight. So y'all beat off together? Okay. Mm. I mean, I just had to put the thought out there. It's just one of those mysteries of the universe that always, you know, just been on my mind. Like, what the fuck? But anyway, moving on, moving on. They up there looking at the tape. Arian. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, she was just upset. Arian's feelings was hurt because y'all know that if you ask me from season one, Arian wanted to get at Mimi. And this is the first time that she actually gets to see her fully, completely naked and in all those positions that she wants to put Mimi in. And Nico is doing it, and it just don't look right. It's not fucking the pillar. And she's just like, damn, he hit it first. That's what she's like. That's what I'm getting the feeling for. But I know it's because, you know, she basically, they feel like she's degrading herself on the screen. And it's everybody was saying, even K. Michelle and Jocelyn, you know, you could tell K. Michelle and Jocelyn, they probably said the shit for, you know, kicks and kikis and all that shit to be funny saying that it was a production. But you got people that's supposed to be actually your friends saying that, bitch, look at the different rooms. This shit is like a fucking production. Y'all knew this shit was coming out. Y'all did this shit on purpose. Purpose. And then Erica getting all upset and was like, I can't, I, I can't stand by this because you're a fucking woman. You got a daughter. You wasn't fucking thinking who would do some shit like this. And go back to the beginning when Stevie J was like, and then my daughter's mother got, uh, you know, this sex tape coming out and all this shit trying to make it seem like she's so bad. But y'all do, as y'all keep on reminding us, you know, in the comments and shit, Stevie, you got a sex tape out with Eve and you got dick pitch out. So, you know. You ain't no better, but I understood totally where Erica was coming from because, like I said in the other videos, when these sex tapes and stuff come out, it's not the man that get all the backlash. It is the woman, regardless of if they're in a long-term fucking relationship or whatever. They call her the whore all the goddamn time. It never fucking fails, even if they've been together for 10 damn years and this is the first person that she ever fucked with and they just so happened, you know, that was her first. They've been together for 15 years. They just so happened to want to do some adventure and, and film their stuff and all of a sudden it get leaks and she's the hoe. Never fails. It's a double standard. And I totally get where fucking Erica um, came from. But she was doing the most, but I get it. I get it. That's a fucking friend right there, if you ask me. Ain't no real friend gonna sit by and say, oh, you cool for that. You know, you just do what you gotta do. No. No. Tell you about yourself. A real fucking friend. 
will tell you the shit that you don't want to hear instead of telling you what you want to hear and pumping your motherfucking head up when you fucking wrong and you know you wrong. There you fucking go. They tell you the goddamn truth. So the ending of this video, this is this episode, Nico and Nico had a Beijing. Why do y'all keep doing that? Like, it's like y'all put shoe polish on y'all hair to make it darker and it just looks so fucking fake. Like, come the fuck on. If you bald it and you going out, you got to shave it. Don't color that shit in with a um, permanent magic marker because it just looks fucking weird. That is not natural, okay? That is not your hair texture. Stop it. He in the confessional. So our mix, our sex tape came out, and it's getting rave views. You know what I'm saying? It didn't surpass Kim, uh, Kim Kardashian, and we just capitalizing on all this shit. We getting all this money, and all the news outlets want to talk about us. Yeah, everything coming in. I'm like, so you want to really convince us that you didn't leak this shit? But look how happy you are about this. Like who the fuck? And then um. They do the first interview. Here go. <laughs> so ever since this sex tape started coming out, I've been quiet for the past 24 hours because it's just making national news everywhere. So we're about to do the first interview. Well, here goes. And I said, Mimi, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I just want to tell them. Vlad TV. Vlad TV, they doing the thing, and it was like, the sex tape out. And he was like, yeah, the whole time, Nico was just so into it. Like, he just started in a blockbuster-ass fucking movie with Steven Spielberg. And it was it just made $100, $100 million at the box open first day. That's how he was sitting there acting. Not a supposedly leaked sex tape. Mind you, Mimi was going all along with Nico, too. Until Vlad said, so question, who was the cameraman? There was no cameraman. It's called a tripod and handheld. And he was like, well, on certain stuff, it looked like the camera was fucking shaking. And I seen all goddamn hands. <laughs> he pulled out the laptop and showed them the stuff. And they was looking like, oh, shit. Mimi trying to look like she, you know, when you're trying to act like you're really looking at something, you're thinking about it so hard, so she squinting her ass like, <laughs> like, I don't see what you're saying. Oh, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Nico looking scared a little bit like, damn, I got caught a little bit. And then he going to say something. He was like, see, the camera's shaking, but there's nobody holding it, and um, there's all y'all hands and stuff right there. It's called shaking the bathroom up. I said, Nico, shut your... If y'all didn't know then, there you go now. Everybody think that shit is fucking production, but hey, it is what it fucking is. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. I apologize for this shit being long, but, you know, I guess y'all like it. I will see y'all later. Peace.